Welcome to Rams Revealed. I'm your host, JB Long, and we are less than three weeks away from training camp. And as of this moment, the Rams have one quarterback on the roster who's taken an NFL snap. One quarterback who's been active and dressed for an NFL game. His name, of course, is Jared Goff. But Jared is not our guest today, though we do look forward to that episode, hopefully soon. However, I find it fascinating and a bit nerve wracking that as the season of COVID approaches, the Rams are completely unproven when it comes to backup options at the most important position in sports. And so that's why I wanted to talk to the only other member of the Rams quarterback room who has met Sean McVay in person even. And he's a bit of a cult hero for our audience because of the way he performed in the 2019 preseason. And if the season were to start today, he would be the presumed Rams backup to Jared Goff. And so we say good afternoon to a 24-year-old from Jacksonville who went on to set Wake Forest records during his time in Winston-Salem, who starred for the Arizona Hot Shots and caught the eye of Les Snead and his staff along the way. John Wolford is our guest this week on Rams Revealed. Hello, John. How are you? Good, good. How are you guys doing? Well, where and how are you? And have you spent this strange, unfortunate off-season in California or elsewhere? I am currently in uh, West Hollywood. I've stayed out in L.A. to train. I um, have not traveled much, obviously, and uh, just hoping this thing starts to clear up before the season starts. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, I know you're aware of this, but, of course, in football, the backup quarterback is one of the most popular and discussed players on the roster sometimes. And he's always described as one play away from having his moment. And I find it fascinating that in our current environment, you're actually one positive test away. Have you kicked that around in your mind at all this summer that, you know, a Jared Goff quarantine, unfortunate as that might be, could thrust you into a starting role? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think any player has to to realize the reality of the situation is that at any even week if a player tests positive, and it could be Thursday or Friday, um, that you still need to be preparing as if you're the starter because the likelihood of that happening, of him not being able to play, is higher with, with COVID going around. So I, I'd like to think that I always take that approach that, you know, I'm going to prepare like I'm the starter, so whenever that opportunity comes, I'm, I'm ready. And it's not going to come as a shock, and I'm not going to need an extra week to prepare. So that's been my mindset since I got to the Rams. When I was on the practice squad, I tried to prep like I was the starter. and. And hopefully that has carryover into the season. And um, God forbid Jared does contract it or, or uh, something happens in, in that regard. But I'll, I'll be ready if it does. You're aware, too, that NFL teams have predominantly stopped carrying three quarterbacks on their active roster in recent years. But active rosters have already expanded to 55 this year with the new uh, structure. And more players may be required for this particular season. And I would strongly suspect that all 32 teams are going to carry three quarterbacks this season, wouldn't you? I, I think that makes sense. You know, if you put yourself in the mind of, of an NFL GM or an NFL head coach, uh, you're going to be much more wary of signing a guy off the street and having to march him out if, you know, God forbid, two guys in the quarterback room get uh, the coronavirus. So uh, from a practical standpoint, it, it makes more sense to carry more. And that's got to be huge for you and players like you because it multiplies your odds that you're going to be, A, with the Rams, we hope, or B, catch a job somewhere across the league in September and beyond. Totally, yeah. I think uh, if there's you know, an extra roster spot on 32 teams and you're in the top 90 of the NFL, then, then you're making a you know, minimum salary and, and that's a good amount of money. So um, my goal is to be the two, though. Like, my goal is not to leave the Rams. My goal is to stick here um, and prove that I can play at this level. And so that's the mindset I have. Um, but I'm obviously aware of the realities of the situation. Sure. Yeah, we'll get into a lot of that here in this uh, edition of Rams Revealed with John Wolford. How are you balancing personally any COVID concerns you might have versus the urgency to capitalize on this moment in your professional career? Yeah, I think I think I keep a pretty even keel. Um, you know, there's a dislocation in everyone's lives right now. And uh, a lot of times that's an opportunity, right? We, we didn't have, you know, an in, uh, in-person off-season program, right? So how can you make the most of being at home, of finding ways to train, of ways to emulate what a game's like, of ways, ways of watching film so you, you gain reps without being out on the field? Mm-hmm. And so I, I like to look at it as an opportunity. Um, maybe some guys are going to be more relaxed in their preparation. 
or they're not taking care of their bodies much because we didn't have that off-season program. So it, my mindset is this, is, is in a dislocation, there's opportunities everywhere, and, and this is no different. For me. So, John, here's an opportunity to take our audience behind the scenes a little bit. When you're a franchise quarterback like Jared, you live in California year-round, maybe you make some calls, find a field, get the guys together, Cop, Woods, Higby, whoever might be available. Uh, but, John, as, as the presumed backup, who do you throw to during the offseason, especially this one where the dynamics have been so complicated? Yeah, um, so there's some guys. You know, Greg Dorch is out here who uh, actually played with at Wake Forest. Um, Tristan Jackson's out here right now. Johnny Munt's out here. So there's some, some guys on the team that are available to throw. And it's nice that I'm able to stay in L.A. because there's a lot of guys who congregate around this area. And beyond that, a lot of guys end up coming out to L.A. to train just because of the weather. So I haven't had too much of an issue finding receivers. I've had to hop a few fences to get on some fields. <laughs> you ask you know, 90% of the guys in the league, that's true. So um, that's kind of been the dynamic. But it's been, it's been fun, um, and I think we're getting good work. When friends and family ask, hey, what's Jared Goff like? What do you typically answer? He's just a good dude. Um, you know, he's been nothing but gracious to me and helping me, you know, grasp the offense to learn. Um, and, you know, he's been through it for four or five years now. And, and uh, he's just great to work with. Um, and, you know, I appreciate all that he's done. Um, Welcome me into the quarterback room. And, you know, he hasn't, you know, here's some horror stories sometimes about, older quarterbacks, you know, having a command and being hard on the younger guys. And he hasn't done anything like that. So let's assume for the moment that you are given the honor of being that number two for the Rams this season, right? Which would essentially mean you're filling the role that Blake Bortles had in the quarterback room and, and the week to week game plan. How can you return that favor to Jared? What do you think makes you uniquely equipped to assist in the preparation, not only for yourself, but for QB one? Yeah, I think, um, one, one of the strengths that I have is I have a pretty good grasp of the game of football. I'm obviously young, um, but I think that there's a reason that I've been able to stick is partially because I've been able to capture so much mentally in, in the training I had in college where I was pretty involved in the offense. Um, so in any way that I can assist Jared, whether that's film preparation, if I'm seeing a certain tendency on a blitz to, you know, if he needs me to look at his mechanics one way or another, like, Hey, watch my feet on this one. Um, so you're always looking for ways to help. You realize you know, your job is to be the number two, to be ready to play, but your job is also to get the number one ready. And um, I realized that, that I have a role there and I have a role to help, you know, the, the undrafted free agent receivers who don't have an off season program too, because, you know, they may have to play as well. And um, you're just trying to find ways to make yourself valuable. And uh, so I realized that and, and I'm trying to do it to the best of my ability. You reference your depth of football knowledge despite your young age there and that answer. I wonder what's the most important thing you think you know now that you may not have known a year ago? That's a good question. Um, I honestly, that's a really good question. I, I'm kind of stumped to be honest. Um, I know this. I know that there. you always think you know a lot and then you go through another year of football and you learn more. And uh, being in the Rams offense, you know, I came out of college and, and I had a pretty good grasp of defenses, but you take it to another level each year that you're in the NFL and you take it to another level with every rep that you get, right? It's just like rep, putting, the, to, putting those reps in the bank and then you just see things as sni uh, a snippet quicker and it makes a difference. So there's a constant um, turnover in, in what you're learning and, and you always can learn more. And I, I don't think by any means I've learned, you know, what Sean has or Jared has at this point, but um, I think I'm on a good track. Let me re-tee it then with a follow-up this way. What's the most unique thing about playing quarterback for Sean McVay relative to other offenses you've learned and played in? Uh, he's just had an understanding of defense at a very intricate level. I think he could call a defense if he wanted to. And so that combined with how much work he puts in, um, and this, the scheme that he's able to dial up it really helps quarterbacks be in a good position to, to execute. So just his overall understanding, his, his knowledge of the game, um, and then his command of the offense and his attention to detail. There's just a laundry list of things that he does well, and, uh, and it really makes us as quarterbacks better. It makes us as an offense better. It makes us a team better. So across the board, um, I, he's one of the best, if not the best coach I've ever been on. 
So John, I've speculated something similar previously, but you just said it and you come from a more informed position. So I want to reinforce that point. I think Sean McVay could be a defensive coordinator in the NFL as well, right? He's an offensive guru by reputation, but if he really flipped that switch and committed to it, am I off base there? Cause it seems like you feel the same way. No, I think he could call the defense. He knows all the calls on defense. I mean, he's able to go into a team meeting and essentially talk through, I don't know, their in and out call. If it's man, I don't know exactly what they are, what the calls mm-hmm. the defense uses, but um, he's got a great grasp of that. Not only what our defense does, but the intent behind what a defense is trying to do when they play us. And without a doubt in my mind, he could call it in the NFL. I do want to take a quick trip through the AAF, short-lived though it was. It's not that far behind us when you think about it, though, given all that's transpired. Perhaps it feels like a lifetime ago for you. Uh, but a couple things on the Arizona Hotshots. First, Rick Neuheisel was your head coach, and he's someone that I've crossed paths with professionally and share many friends in common uh, with. So as a figure familiar to our LA audience for sure, what was it like to play for Rick? He's awesome. Man, I, I still keep in touch with Rick, but uh... – you know, it was his first time, I think, calling plays in six years. And we had a month, right? Because at, at the time, Hugh Freeze was supposed to be our offensive coordinator, and then he took the job at Liberty. And so then you get a bunch of, you know, 90 dudes who don't know each other, and you install an offense in a month. And I think I thought he did a great job piecing together different coaches, different players, and getting us a scheme that was effective um, to go out and play and win some games. So, uh, and then beyond that, it's just a He's a good dude, and, and mm-hmm. the guys respect him. And um, I'm fortunate that AAF happened because, quite frankly, I would not be in the NFL if it didn't. And when that league went under, what odds did you feel like you had of making an NFL roster? Or said another way, if I had told John Wolford back then that he would have a legitimate look at being a number two quarterback in 2020, how would that have felt? Um, I see. I would say if you're playing the probabilities, they'd be low. I, I don't have that mindset, though. I've always had the mindset that I can make it. I just got to hit my shot when I get it. And um, there's definitely an element of luck in life that a lot of people don't account for. And, you know, the fact that I was cut by the Jets and then the AAF popped up that same year is luck. And uh, I was fortunate that I was able to take advantage of that opportunity. But never in my mind has – in my mind, I guess I have a confidence that I can play at this level. I can be a two and work towards being a one. And that's just the way I operate. And uh, I say that with humility. What did that fourth preseason game in Houston last summer mean to reinforcing that belief though? Yeah. I mean, there was, uh, that was a fun game. Um, And I had, I had, I I think I had two touchdown passes, but um, yeah, anytime you go out on an NFL field and you execute well, it gives you a sense of confidence. And, you know, then you go out and practice and you practice well. And that confidence builds and, and it gives you the sense that, all right, like without a doubt in my mind, I belong. Um, and then it's just a matter of sticking. Yes, you were correct. Two touchdowns, including the 15 yarder over the shoulder of Simba to win it, uh, which was awesome. The, the highlight yeah. of the preseason, perhaps. Um, how did it feel from your end when the announcement of the report was made that this 2020 preseason would be cut in half, knowing those would be your reps in a normal August, though? Yeah, it's uh, um, obviously you want those reps, right? Um, and, and I want them to prove without beyond a shred of a doubt that I should be the two. Um, so hopefully we have the two and uh, I'm not going to comment anymore on that because I know that's a negotiation that may go down to zero. So I understand what the PA is saying from a health risk standpoint. Um, But you want those opportunities to prove that you can get the job done. I'll pivot to uh, one of my favorite comps for you. I'm not sure if it's cross your radar, um, but a poor man's Kyler Murray has come to my attention uh, from, from a credible source that, that I appreciate and that I follow. Any thoughts on that being compared to uh, a number one pick? Yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. Uh, I think Kyler's a great player, and there's definitely some similarities in the way we play. Um, I, I know everyone's good. Anytime you're a short quarterback, they're going to find other short quarterbacks to compare you to. So right. I'll take that and, and uh, keep working and, and – make that uh yeah it's a a good comment i'll take it 
I wanted you to know, though, that I came prepared with this on your behalf. Who's the tallest quarterback on this list? Kyler, Russell Wilson, or John Wolford? I think it's me. It is you. Yeah, I think it is me. And Drew Brees only has you by half an inch, so you're, you're right there. Oh, yeah. You're, there you you're in great company. That trend, that trend is changing for sure, I think, which is good for, for the short quarterbacks throughout college football and, and guys like me. One other thought, uh, not to go back to the preseason necessarily, but just this offseason in general, if coming out of college or even from the AAF last summer, you had to learn Sean McVay's Ram system remotely, how much of an uphill battle would that have been? And I ask because that's what you know your competition, Josh Love and Bryce Perkins, are faced with this summer coming out of college. Def- definitely a challenge. Um, I think – what people you have to realize too, though, is even if you're in the building or you're not, you're not getting a lot of reps either way, right? So, like last off season, you know, I could probably count on my hand how many reps I got in the off season program. Um, mm-hmm. So you, you're just going to have to really spend the time to, you know, learn the base stuff first, the formations, know where people line up, then build on the concepts. And um, it's by no means an easy task because it's such a big offense, um, but. Uh, it, it, I definitely would say being in the building versus not being in the building. But what I talked about earlier, it's a dislocation. So for some guys, that may be a bad thing. They may not be as dialed in. Mm. That's where those uh, post-practice moments that we've all observed, right? Even training camp where you find whoever's willing to stay with you after right. to get those extra reps in probably come in really handy, I bet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, a quick family backstory. I read that your Uncle Will had a few Pro Bowl seasons. He was yeah. uh, drafted by the Bills offensive lineman. And, of course, the Rams are scheduled to go to Buffalo week three. So in the context of what Wilk has kind of meant to your football career, I wonder, would that be a special trip for you to make? Um, it would in the sense that Will's been kind of at my side since uh, I really gave the NFL a shot um, from you know picking an agent to just talking through the process. And um, he's been great to me. And, so yeah, I don't know if he'll be able to make the game. Obviously, with the pandemic, there may not be fans in the the stadium. But uh, yeah, there's some sentimental value there for sure. Nice. All right. Well, we sir sure appreciate your time. I'd like to finish with a little two minute drill. Since you're the first quarterback we've had on the podcast, a few lighthearted, quick hitters here. Nothing okay. too heavy. Short answers are fine. Um, but you grew up in Jacksonville, and my colleague Maurice Jones drew. Uh, was starring during that window of time. So I have to ask, growing up in Jacksonville, how big was MJD around town? Really big deal or no big deal? I'd say he's a pretty big deal. Not not really, but pretty big. All right. I'll, I'll have to pass that along to him. <laughs> you also once starred in the 2017 Belk Bowl. Do you know that bowl was recently renamed? Oh. Uh. I did know that. I don't know what it is. It is the Duke's Mayo Bowl now. Duke's and Mayo. Duke's is the third largest mayonnaise brand in the United States behind Hellman's and Kraft. There you go. Has a secu- John, has a security guard at an NFL stadium ever turned you away or not believed you were really with the team? <laughs> That's a jab. No, that has not happened because I'm getting off the bus usually. Do the babyface comments and descriptions ever get old? Um, I take them as a compliment because hopefully, you know, 10 years from now, I'm looking younger than, than what I would be. No question. Way to take it in stride. Last one. Is it nice knowing your AAF touchdown record will never be broken? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. Well, we thank uh, the AAF's all-time leader in touchdown passes, single season, John Wolford. Uh, you really are one of the people in storylines I'm looking forward to uh, following most during this training camp. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity to get to uh, know you better, and I hope our fans have that opportunity this season and for many years to come. Awesome. Thanks so much, JB. And to our audience, before you get on with your day, we do want to express our sincere gratitude for the ratings and the reviews that have been left this offseason. If you have not done so already, we'd love it if you took a few moments now to let us know how you feel and that you are listening. For John Wolford, Matt Israel, Jory Hirsch, and Travis Langer, I'm J.D. Long, and this is Rams Reveal. Rams Reveal.